By far the most common question I get asked is, what's food science? But after that, the follow-up question is always, where do food scientists get jobs? So today I thought I would go into more detail about three different sectors of the food industry that a food science graduate might find themselves working in. All right, the first sector I want to start with is food manufacturing because I think this is the most obvious area of the food industry. And what I mean by food manufacturers are they are the people or the companies that make the products for consumers to sell directly to consumers. The foods you see in the grocery store or in stores like Costco and Sam's Club. And often these are really iconic brands, at least the very large food manufacturers. Companies like Hershey, General Mills, Kellogg's, you know, Mars Wrigley, Kraft, Heinz. These are brands people are very, very familiar with and are used to seeing in stores. But that doesn't mean that there's only these giants playing in the food manufacturing space. There's actually plenty of mid-sized and startups or small companies. Where I went to school, there was a lot of mid-sized companies that made cheese, for example. You may have heard of brands like Sartori, Sargento. Those are sort of mid-sized companies. Whereas the small companies, often these are startups. So something like Impossible Foods or Beyond Meat. Those are really good examples of some of the smaller companies that would still need food scientists. All right, let's move on to the second sector of the food industry I want to talk about, and that's ingredient companies or ingredient manufacturers. And these are companies that act sort of behind the scenes. You probably won't recognize their names because they only make one component of the food product. They don't manufacture the final food product that you would see in the grocery store. And a great example of this is the first internship I had in the food industry. This was at a, co a company, they're called Dairy Concepts. And you've probably never heard of them because they produce cheese powder but they then ship this cheese powder to their customers. It might be used in something like boxed mac and cheese, or it might be sprayed onto a chip like Doritos or maybe Cheetos. It's, it's just, they only make the cheese powder. They don't make the final chip or Cheeto, right? And so these, these guys, these companies, they're really, you know, kind of un underappreciated because their name is not on the final product because really they just provide one ingredient. There is actually a lot of these ingredient manufacturers because they can be very specialized. One manufacturer might only provide different oils or they might sort of specialize in starches or flowers from different grains. And again, they just provide these to a food manufacturer and it's that food manufacturer that you typically see on a label of a food product because they're the ones that really put together the final product and assemble all these different ingredients into a food product. There are a couple big names for ingredient companies. I think the ones that are most well known are probably Cargill, Tate and Lyle, ADM is another one. Um, there's a few other big players, but a lot of these companies are quite specialized and maybe smaller. All right, the final area I want to talk about is food service. And this I think is less obvious to people that food scientists will have to work for the food service industry. And what I mean by food service could be, do you have cafeterias at your workplace, you know, cafeterias in schools and universities? They don't make, you know, their food from scratch. They are getting it from somewhere. And food service also includes a lot of quick service restaurants. Uh, Starbucks is a good example, Panera Bread, McDonald's, Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, all these restaurants they aren't producing their food from scratch, right? 
at Panera Bread, they are getting, you know, a big container of a soup already assembled and probably just throwing that in a heater to warm it up. They're not chopping up each of these individual ingredients and making their own soup. Food scientists that work in the food service sector, they're responsible for things like new product launches. Maybe they need to launch a new chicken sandwich. Maybe they're going to formulate a new sauce, that type of thing. And they also would probably be responsible for helping with menu development for these restaurants or cafeterias. There also would probably be a big emphasis on food safety and food quality because again, they are handing this food off to another restaurant or institution to prepare. So they have to think, how can we make sure this food is safe even once we give it to the next restaurant and they are the ones that prepare it. Awesome, I think that just about wraps everything up. I hope this was helpful, especially if you're thinking about majoring in food science or going into the food industry. But I would super appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and if you hit that red subscribe button. And I'll talk to you next time.